Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May-June 2023 paper 2. In today's lesson, we will start from question number 11. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Question 11 says part of an electrical circuit is shown in the figure. In 60 seconds, 4.80 times 10 to 20 electrons pass point C. Far part A show that the current at Z is about 1.3 amps. So first of all, let's try to understand what is current. Current simply is equal to the total charge passing through a point divided by total Time. So what exactly it means? It simply means that if I look at this point Z for a time delta T for a time delta T and delta Q of charge passing through this point in time delta T. So if I divide that total charge by time taken, I can find out current passing through point C. So that's the reason we call current is rate of flow of charge. It simply means that if you look at one point, you count number of electrons passing through that point in a certain period of time. And then you divide the charge of electrons divided by the time means that certain period of time that is electric current. So in this case, simply we can say I is equal to delta Q over delta T and delta Q we can say this is equal to number of electrons times the charge on single electron divided by time taken. So in this case we have number of electrons that is equal to 4.80 times 10 to 20 electrons and the charge on single electron is 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs divided by the time taken time is 60 seconds now if we solve this one we will get our final answer will be about 1.28 amps so this is up to 2sf we can say this is 1.3 amps so this is our final answer so simply what we have done in this case it simply means that i was looking at point c for 60 seconds and i counted this number of electrons passing through this point and then I divided the charge passing through point C in time 60 seconds so I have calculated current passing through point Z like this you need to understand is a beautiful thing I know you're very clear with this one I is equal to Q over T but maybe you don't have that much deep understanding means that sense I hope this one is clear to you part B says in 60 seconds the resistor transfers 24 joules of energy calculate the PD potential difference across the resistor so simply for this question we can say E is equal to V times I times T we need to calculate V so we can say this is E divided by I times T value of E is given that is equal to 24 joules we can divide this one by I that is equal to 1.28 amps we have calculated in the last part and time taken is equal to 60 seconds so if we solve this one we will get our final answer is 0.31 volts this is the answer so if you have done these steps you will get two marks let's try to understand a little bit more about this one so we can have better understanding about pd so you can simply imagine this one is a resistor and if we connect a voltmeter across this resistor across this resistor reading on this voltmeter will be equal to 0.31 volts so now we ne need to understand what is 0.31 volts we can also say for example here we have v so this is equal to e divided by it it is equal to q so we can say this is e divided by q so volts means that this is joules per coulomb so we can say 0.31 joules per coulomb joules per coulomb what is this value 24 joules 24 joules means that when current passes through this resistor for 60 seconds how much electrical energy has been converted 
into thermal energy that energy is equal to 24 joules 24 joules so what is meaning of 0.31 volts when 0.31 so this is 0.31 joules per coulomb it means that when one coulomb of charge passes through this resistor how much electrical energy has been converted into thermal energy that is equal to 0.31 joules so we can say for one coulomb charge passing through this resistor 0.31 joules of electrical energy has been converted into thermal energy so this is what we can understand from 0.31 Falls. so like this you need to understand so what is potential difference potential difference simply tells us how much electrical energy has been converted into other forms of energy per unit charge it means if one coulomb of charge passes through the resistor how much electrical energy will be converted into other forms of energy that energy is 0.3 one volt and that is also the potential difference i hope this makes sense to you question 12 says a student investigated the internal resistance of a cell using the circuit shown the student used the variable resistor to vary the reading on the ammeter he recorded the corresponding readings from the voltmeter the student plotted the results on a graph as shown so we have v on y axis and we have i on x axis part a says determine the emf of the cell and the internal resistance of the cell so in order to answer this question first of all we need to understand what this voltmeter is reading I mean what is the reading on this voltmeter the reading on this voltmeter is representing the terminal PD or we can simply say this voltmeter is reading terminal PD means the potential difference across terminals of the cell so we can also draw one small cell here so you can simply imagine this is one small cell so this is one small cell and this is positive terminal of the cell and this is negative terminal of the cell so the reading on voltmeter is telling us the terminal pd potential difference across terminals of the cell but this cell has internal resistance so the emf is not equal to terminal potential difference so if we write down terminal potential difference or first of all if we write down emf emf will be equal to the terminal potential difference means the vt plus v lost in the battery due to internal resistance v lost we can rearrange this one we can write down emf will be equal to vt the terminal potential difference plus i times internal resistance for this question it is given to us the reading on y-axis this is vt so we can rearrange so this is terminal pd and this will be equal to e minus i times r if we rearrange again we can say this is i times r or simply we can say this is r times i plus emf and this is v now if we compare this one with straight line equation means y is equal to m x plus c so the y intercept so we can say the y intercept this is representing emf so y intercept is representing emf and the gradient is representing internal resistance so we can write on here gradient in this case is equal to minus times r and y intercept is equal to emf now simply we need to find the y intercept in order to find y intercept simply we can extend the line so we can extend the line at this point so this is value of emf so we can read from here we have to 2.5 so this is about 1.5 volts now simply we can write on this is about 1.5 5 volts so the reading of of emf is equal to 1.5 volts you can also see from here if i rearrange this one so we have vt this is equal to e minus i times r if current is equal to zero 
current is equal to 0 so we will see vt this is equal to emf emf so that's the reason when current is equal to 0 emf is equal to 1.5 volts very important point sometimes you understand by equations but you don't understand the physical meaning of that so it means that when current is equal to 0 terminal potential difference is equal to emf of the cell so in this case emf is equal to 1.5 volts now we need to find out the gradient so we can choose two points let's say if i take this point here one point here and if i take another point here so i can take these two points coordinates of this point we can write down 0.4 comma 1.2 and coordinates of this point we can write down 1.4 so we have coordinates of these two points then now we can find the gradient we can also draw the triangle if you want to draw a triangle so we can draw this line from here and we can complete this triangle and now we need to find the gradient of this triangle so we can write down here gradient in this case will be equal to 1.2 minus we have 0.44 and this is divided by 1.4 actually the better way is we can write down this one in a little bit different way so we have here we have 0.4 minus we have 1.4 so you will not get confused with negative sign here now if we solve this one we will get our final answer that will be equal to 0 0.76 so gradient is equal to negative 0 0.76 but we have already said that gradient is equal to minus r so we can write on here this is minus r so this minus this minus will be cancelled so it means r is equal to 0.76 ohms so this is how we can answer and so emf is equal to 1.5 volts and r is equal to 0.76 ohms this question is a typical question you will see this one in many past papers so try to master this one try to grasp these concepts if these concepts are clear to you so the questions about internal resistance you can answer with confidence part b says the student placed an identical cell in series with the original cell in the circuit he connected the voltmeter across both cells and repeated the investigation. The student plotted a new graph of these voltmeter and ammeter readings. Describe how the new graph is different from the graph for one cell. So for this question, first of all, we can simply sketch. First of all, we have one cell and here we have ammeter and we have variable resistor that is connected here. So this one is the variable resistor. Then this one is the complete circuit. Then we have voltmeter that is connected across terminals of the cell. And for this case, we have already discussed that EMF of the cell. This will be equal to the terminal PD plus I times R. And for the second case, we have two cells now. So we can draw two cells. So this is one cell. And we have an other cell that is connected here so we can connect another cell so these two cells they are connected in series so we can redraw emitter here so this is the emitter and here we have variable resistor so this is variable resistor and this one is complete circuit and again we have one voltmeter that is connected across these two cells now for this question we can simply write on emf this will be equal to vd plus i times r but in this case emf is double so this is double so it means this side is also double so this is multiplied by 2 so we can write on here 2e this is equal to 2vt plus we have 2 times i times r now we can rearrange this one we can write down 2 vt this will be equal to 2 e minus 2 times i times r 
we can rewrite here so we have 2 vt this is equal to minus 2 r times i plus we have 2 e and if we compare this one with the previous one we have vt that was equal to negative r times i plus e now simply we can see from here emf this is equal to the y intercept so we can say emf was represented by y intercept and the gradient was representing internal resistance so this one is over gradient so this is our gradient new value of gradient so here we have new value of gradient we can say this is new value of gradient and this is new value of y intercept so this is new value of y intercept so if we compare these two simply we can say in this case gradient is doubled so gradient is double so this is the answer what you need to write down gradient is doubled and y intercept is also doubled because this is only e and this y intercept is equal to plus 2e so we can also say y intercept is also doubled in this case so y intercept is also doubled so this is the point you need to understand if you understand like this you can simply answer so question is asking you to describe so you no need to sketch i hope this question is clear to you if this question is clear to you please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important and also if you need more help and or if you are looking for more resources please join patreon on patreon you can find more resources and also on patreon you can ask me for more help